I'm gonna be working with tubulane lattices. Now these are inspired by molecular structures. The tubulane version of these specifically is inspired by fullerene tubules from carbon. Now I do have other geometries that I'm experimenting with. Um, one of them is a three-dimensional hex. Uh, so I've got two basic primitives, which I'm gonna iterate over while I keep testing them to see if I can get something that's pretty effective at stopping a 22 long rifle round, which is still impressive considering that these are just 3D printed resin, which is known to be quite brittle. So of course, I mean, the goal here is to get something that works well for these little guys so I can transfer it to a much stronger medium to see how those perform for something more serious. Now, if we shoot just a plain solid cube of resin, you're actually gonna notice a more traditional, what's called a Hertzian cone. You get this really strong point of impact that pulverizes the material, and then you get these devastating fracture lines that split the material in often in large chunks, and you will also get the bullet will almost always dart off into the actual clay itself. So you can see that it was, this was not at all effective at actually stopping the round, and much of the cube was actually unaffected by by the strain of the round. So there's a lot of sections here which there's no cracks or fracturing, which lets me know that much of this was actually unused. That's where these can really shine because they actually have room that is done in a particular pattern, not only with compression type forces, but also tensile forces as well. So if I put pressure on one point, it can more effectively distribute that across the entire structure itself. Now I've had comments saying to use flexible materials or even springs. Now that is simply not gonna work with ballistics. I'm gonna do a video later this fall showing how to actually make my first version of the Batman armor, the lightweight molded chest plate that I have that stops 357 Magnum, nine millimeter full metal jacket. And I'll go over much more of the impulse physics involved in that one, because I think it's really fascinating in the stages that the bullet goes through while you're trying to stop it. But when it comes to creating something that is spongy or soft, you really don't want that because you're not giving the material behind it a chance to react. So that is the speed of propagation through a material, which is actually the same as the speed of sound in that medium. So for rubber, for example, it's about 200 feet per second. So in that case, a 22 long rifle round that's subsonic is going 1,100 feet per second, a little over that. So it's going to end up hitting the, the material and going through it before it has a chance to disperse, making it a terrible choice for stopping rounds. Whereas something like aluminum, a more typical construction material, is about 20,000 feet per second. So as soon as that round hits the front of that, not that aluminum's particularly great at stopping rounds, but that's an example of a material that will distribute that force very quickly, almost instantaneously, such that most of the structure can be contributing to stopping the round right away. So I'm using Blender here to create my models and I'm basically just determining in my mind what the basic primitives are. Firstly, I wanna create a three-dimensional hexagonal structure. And the next one is a tubulane one, more like carbon nanotubes. So I've been looking at some molecular pictures and deciding how I should design this such that I can create a singular node, which I can apply arrays to in all three dimensions, so that I can create a matrix as big as I want. So once I have the structure in mind, I do jot down the basic primitive node, and then I can keep track of the dimensions such that I can apply a little bit of trigonometry and basic arithmetic to be able to create arrays with very precise offsets that I can scale these indefinitely without the arrays being disconnected from the actual vertices as I scale them. Another nice thing about making just the simple primitive is that I can very quickly dive down into just the very core node that is active, adjust my planes, create a bigger node, shrink things down to whatever I want to create an updated lattice if I wanted to test a different version of it. So if I wanna see how a rigid honeycomb-like structure does with that hard hexagonal shape. I can also apply a smooth modifier if I wanted to see conversely how that applies with a smooth version of those hex, so more spherical. One thing to keep in mind though is that these structures can very quickly have hundreds of thousands of nodes and they are a complex shape with many interactions. So when Blender applies a smooth modifier, it is an exponentially intensive process. So you do have to be careful. I saved off a Blender file before I started adding those smooth modifiers because you could very quickly get yourself in a case where you blow out the file. Basically, Blender will crash and it won't open the file again because there's just too much going on. So while that's printing on my Saturn IV printer, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox and build the curing station and the washing station that I got from Elegoo. So these stations are basically just so you can ensure that you end up with a very clean print at the end of it all. So the assembly of these was extremely easy. The wash station, I just had to snap on the base because it's got a magnetic wheel that spins and that's gonna basically move your solution around. And then for the UV curing station, I just had to attach the LED bars, put them on and add some screws. So I just fill the vat up with isopropyl alcohol. This is 90 90%, then I douse my prints in there, give it a good wash. The wash station will cycle in different directions to really get in there um, to clean it pretty well. Then let them air dry before putting them into the curing station. And my buddy Matt was out visiting, so I actually had him help along with this process. Say hi first. 
Hi, I'm Matt. Hi. Right. State Farm. <laughs> yeah. Ready? All right. Put it in there. This was off. This was not. It's a fail safe. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. Now we found out that the curing station does have an alarm that goes off, which is cool. I mean, that makes sense. It's a safety feature. So if the lid is not on there all the way, it will ping and basically alarm until that's set. Once they're cured, last step is just weighing the parts. You know, research numbers, basically how thick the cube was, the weight, the structure that it was. So I labeled them all. And that's just the process that I'm gonna do for all of them. So every set of new cubes that I make, I'm gonna do this whole process for print, wash, cure, and weigh. The test platform I'm using is a 22 pistol with a five and a half inch barrel. Um, that's not including the registered suppressor, which will actually typically help with the velocity. Now I'm firing these subsonic 22 rounds. They're traveling at 1,125 feet per second, and it's a 45 grain round. I've been using a modeling clay for many years to do my ballistic tests because it's super cheap, readily available. Um, to flatten it out initially, I found that the easiest way is just dropping it because it's pretty heavy, so it'll flatten itself out. And then you have a nice smooth surface to do your tests with. But the biggest thing about it that's great is it's impressionable. But if you put a plate against it and shoot it and the plate deforms, you can measure that back face deformation because it's impressed into the clay. Additionally, if you have a, a test fail and the round goes through, you can judge between two different tests, which one left a bigger wound channel, how far they went into the clay, and all of that to kind of gauge which one had more energy. <laughs> don't stick to my head, I don't care. Oh no, no, don't do that. <laughs> this guy's ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> it looks like it's already made. Like, it looks like it's already made. <laughs> so now we can get onto the actual testing, and I'm just gonna let these play through. Yeah, that's that's crap. Yeah. That's garbage. Yep. Zero dissipation. Didn't come out though. Oh. Didn't come out the back. Look for the bullet. Now the parentheses two just means that I wanted to redo the test. I did the exact same test to see if it would do better because I thought this one would be a better structure. So I did reprint it and fire again, but I got the same result. And then I tried again with the same structure, but this time I just oriented it laterally to shoot the side. But I kind of expected that to do worse and it did because it actually did exit the clay entirely here. Oh, that was a terrible shot. Oh, went down a little bit on it. Yeah, here. Can I rotate this down? That's so cool. Keep going, keep going. Oh, there's pieces of, bullet, pieces of bullet right here. They broke it apart. Dude, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't go anywhere. Nope, it broke the bullet. Stopped it. It took the bullet. Where the bullet went. No, it, it, it's right there. It's literally right, it broke the bullet apart. I don't know where the rest of it is, but yeah, so the rest of it shattered. Okay. Check the back too for... Oh yeah, thanks. So with those tests in mind and realizing that the smaller bridge tubulane did the best, I recreated even more variants using those same bridging techniques um, to be able to test another set. Again, these are all 30 millimeters thick. So the hexagonal woven bridge was the only 30 millimeter thick plate that was able to not only stop the round, but also prevent the entire cube from shattering. So I was able to shoot this a second time. And the crazy thing is not only was this the only one shot a second time, but I shot it right next to the original round and it still stopped that. Now it did break apart, but you can see that the bullet was actually right on the surface of this super soft clay, showing that it took out nearly all the energy still of that second round and balling up the lead.
Now that we were able to successfully stop these rounds at 30 millimeters, I'm gonna take the best performing ones, mutate them a little bit, do some tweaks, and make new ones at just 20 millimeters thick, so 30% thinner to see if we can still stop the same rounds. And it's always an interesting reminder when one does particularly poorly because you can see how similar weights of material can still have drastically different results. Now there might be a question on why some are clear, some are red, some are green. This was just as I was running through my ABS-like resin. They are all the same type of resin. The different strength moduluses and things like that are very comparable between each. I did look at the spec sheets before testing. Each of these cube structures I just named myself based on the characteristics that I gave these geometries. There were no other previously existing models which I was really basing these off of, so these were created from scratch. Now the structure that did the best at 30 millimeters was the hexagonal woven bridge, stopping two rounds with close proximity to each other, so that one I was really impressed with, and I decided that it was good enough for me to drop it down to just 20 millimeters thick, which means that the structure has to be much stronger to be able to stop that same round in a shorter distance, so that impulse spike and force needs to be much higher Higher, and it has to do that while having less material behind it. So the three structures here that did actually stop the round, I mean, the, the round in all three was basically just sitting on top of the clay. And this clay was a fresh block. It was really soft. So it shows that it took out nearly all the energy on all three of these structures. The three being the hexagonal woven bridge again, the woven tubulane, and then the alternated tubulane mesh, which the last one I think did the best simply because they all stopped the round in about a similar capacity, but the alternated tubulane mesh was the one that was the least broken apart. So it was able to stay the most intact after that round went through it. So I'm gonna be taking that mesh and have PCB Way actually 3D print a steel version of that lattice so I can embed it with a more traditional composite and ceramic plate to hopefully be able to stop multiple rounds from my 300 Winchester Magnum firing 190 grain rounds that are full metal jacket. I mentioned this earlier, but it's always interesting to see how cubes of similar dimensions and weights can perform drastically differently with some letting the round go completely through, blowing a big hole in the clay where others actually did successfully stop the round. Now, if you wanted to print these top three performing structures yourself, the hexagonal woven bridge, woven tubulane, and the alternated tubulane mesh, just check out Patreon. I've got the files up there so you can print them out, you can look at them, make your own investigations, inspire your own research, all of that directly from my files themselves. So thanks guys so much for watching. As always, I continue to try to read every one of your comments to the best that I can, and I'll see you guys in my next video.